name is Daryl Young. Currently, I'm right here in Aurora, Illinois. Back in 01, I had a surgery or a spinal cord injury, and uh, it left me as a paraplegic. I had some numbness in, in my right foot. Then it got to a point where it got really, really severe, and it started getting up to the hip. So what they did, they took a took an MRI, and they found what was a growth on my spine. And they thought maybe this could be cancerous. But if we can catch this, and if it is cancer, we can catch it early. Well, I never thought that I would have any difficulty walking at all until I woke up off the surgery table. I tried to lift my legs and all that, but none of it would move. And I raised up to get out of the bed, and as soon as I got out of the bed, I went straight to the floor. And the first thing I could think of is like, what have I got myself into? When I first sat down in the wheelchair, I felt like there was no hope because I was gonna be in the wheelchair for the rest of my life. Two years later, I was at the VA hospital on a regular visit, and uh, while I was sitting in my wheelchair, there was a lady that was out in the corridor, and she said, I'm with Dive Hard, and I wanna know if you'd be interested in scuba diving. I looked at her like she was crazy. Who ever heard of anybody being in a wheelchair going out scuba diving? Dive of the day for me. Try one more time. One more time. After sitting in the wheelchair for a long time, I, I wasn't uh, as mobile. And in, in order to get better, I knew it was going to take some work. That seemed about right. I, I want to get up. I want to walk. I want to be able to there, to throw and there. catch a ball with my grandson. And what better way to do it than to go to dive hard? Where are you walking to? Right now, I'm, I'm going over here to take this tank off. <laughs> All right, I'll go behind you. All right. Well, my name's Jim Elliott. I'm the founder and president of DiveHeart. DiveHeart's a non-for-profit 501c3 whose mission is to build confidence, independence, and self-esteem among uh, children, adults, and veterans with disabilities. And we use the zero-gravity environment of scuba diving to do that. We serve all disabilities, cerebral palsy and Down syndrome and muscular dystrophy and MS and, and spinal cord injuries, and cognitive disabilities. They're all candidates for diving. Well, Rick is going to uh, show us how to dive around the quarry when you're totally blind. Rick, you want to tell him how you're going to do that? Follow him out, with, give me directions with his hands up, down, right, left. Um, when it gets me to an obstacle, uh, he'll do the the free dive sign. And free dive means that you, you're you on your own then, right? Right, then I'll be on my own. Okay, I'm gonna pull this away from your face a little bit, okay? I tell people that the learning curve for swimming is this, the learning curve for diving is this, and it's the only activity in the world where there's no gravity. So for people with wheelchairs and stuff, we can get them out of their wheelchairs, get them in the water, and now all of a sudden, it's Johnny the scuba diver, not Johnny in a wheelchair, right? So now Johnny comes out and says, hey, you know what, if I can scuba dive, I can do anything. <laughs> Every single time we get people in the water for the first time, they come up with smiles. It's very rewarding for our buddies and, and for me to be able to give them this experience. It's freedom. 
It's hope. It's reinvigorating that human spirit. Because, you know, if you're born with a disability, you're told your whole life you can't do things. And this is something they can do. You want a drink, see? Yes, please. I am San Bando, and I'm 12 years old and live in the suburb of Downers Grove, Illinois. I have cerebral palsy. It's where your legs don't move as a typical child would, and I can't do some of the things my friends can do. My name is Saba Bando, and I'm Zan's mom. Zan is a very outgoing child. He's a huge sports fan. He attends a typical classroom and enjoys school and enjoys spending time with friends and family. Zan was diagnosed with cerebral palsy when he was about a year old. So in Zan's situation, all four of his limbs are affected, but mainly his lower extremities. So as a result of that, he's unable to walk independently and uses a power chair to get around. I do physical therapy and occupational therapy. I do work on a lot of stretching. I do work on trunk stuff too. Good, that elbow and then through the I walk and do will like exercises. Good camera angle. My husband and I, a while back, had talked about what other activities we could get Zan involved in. I had heard about Dive Heart through a neighbor of mine, and they had divers come out to a pool, and we took Zan out there for open diving that they have. We weren't too nervous to have Zan get in the water. These were very confident divers with a lot of experience, and that made a huge difference in helping us feel comfortable. You got the purge valve right here. Right? To get air. Yeah, that's to add air in case you get some water in there. The first time I came out to dive hard, I was very nervous, but I met Jim Elliott, and then I was hooked afterwards. You feel like Darth Vader yet? <laughs> How would you describe scuba diving to somebody that's never been? It's like you're flying. It really is. I'm able to move my legs, and that helps my legs not only get stretched out, but make them move better. It feels great. After a dive heart session, um, his body will be more limber. It's looser, more relaxed. And there is that added benefit of it being good for your mind, being good for your spirit, because those are also very important aspects of leading a healthy life. So, uh, good no, no, no. I'm sorry. Sir Lewis, this is the hay corn and king king and those. I mean, man, I lost him. I mean, I just love them. I look forward to the time all the time. When I started Dive Heart, we started working with kids primarily. But then I started thinking my father and my uncle were vets with disabilities. And I really want to do something to give back to our veterans. And that's what our Dive Heart Military Wounded Program does. How was it, man? Greg is a Marine who was about to deploy to Iraq when he was hit by a vehicle and suffered a traumatic brain injury and was in a coma for an extended period of time. The traumatic brain injury can manifest itself in a lot of different ways. And with Greg, it was physical and it was auditory. He said, you know, what doctors say I have is a traumatic brain injury. What I call it is my worst nightmare. I felt like I was good for nothing, that I was worthless. And, and unfortunately, able-bodied individuals, especially in the military, where they're, where they're high-speed, adrenaline junkie guys, and then suddenly, when there's traumatic accident, they realize that, that they have a new normal but it's something that, that we can help them get past. When I first met Greg, uh, Greg was in a wheelchair, uh, had to use harnesses and, and lifting devices to get him from the wheelchair into the pool, and, and he did great, and he loved it. You know, above water, there, there's not much I could do physically. Diving is fun, and plus, I hit the, the reward part. It's my recovery, so this just my, my life dramatically. If a person wants to feel better physically and feel better emotionally and feel better overall, I think that diving therapy is a therapy that will motivate you and give you a reason for wanting to get up in the morning and do something different. People with disabilities, a lot of them have very sedentary lifestyles. And we've taken individuals who didn't do a lot, were kind of in a depression, very sedentary, and then have a goal of a scuba adventure trip, maybe to the Florida Keys. Now for 12 months, that vet is getting up going, you know what, in a year from now, I'm gonna be going to Cozumel. So by putting a trip out there, we give them hope. We give them something to look forward to every morning when they get up and, you know, we all need that. Hi, yeah. 
We are at Dive Heart World Headquarters uh, in Downers Grove, Illinois, and uh, we have a thousand square feet here. Can I show you? Yeah. Yeah, come on in. We put up uh, on the wall some of the, the articles that, uh, and, and uh, media coverage that we have. And as we make it around, this is, uh, this is very important when you use the fridge. This is the Dive Heart refrigerator that's, that came from Granny's house. You have to kick the bottom of it. My office, which... Um, we cleaned up just for this occasion. We also have a, a dive locker, which is another part of Downers Grove. Welcome to the dive locker. Everything is uh, numbered and inventoried and staged, ready to go. Our drying racks here. And then as we go further back into the locker, we have a bunch of uh, full foot fins for pool work and then boots and open heeled fins. Seven mil wetsuits, which you gentlemen will be trying on shortly. And then we have shorties, uh, skins and rash guards and three mil suits. This is probably more than most dive shops have. Luckily through the generosity of our donors and our, and our volunteers and friends of Dive Heart, we've been able to, to keep this stocked. We go through a lot of stuff and we upgrade stuff on a regular basis. So. Our goal is eventually to have all of this together in addition to a 40-foot deep pool with windows and tunnels and all sorts of cool high-speed stuff and do research, rehab, education, training, and vocational stuff for people with disabilities. Coming up with the idea of doing this with scuba diving, it was kind of a process. I began diving in college. I was a journalism major and I took scuba. From my perspective, it was just another arrow in my quiver as a journalist. Diving wasn't, wasn't a priority. Diving was something I did when I had a chance. You had family and you had, you had work and that was my life for, for years and years and years. Where are we right now? Well, right now we're at the uh, Chicago Tribune, uh, WGN Radio. They're based on Michigan Avenue, uh, 435 North Michigan. I know that by heart because I was here for so many years. What does this place represent? Well, this is, uh, this is a little bit of history. Um, this is my first job out of college. And uh, this is where I, I worked when I raised my family. Well, I started the Chicago Tribune. I uh, was in newspapers for a while, um, then transferred to WGN Radio. Here at WGN, I was an account executive. Uh, I had a very successful career. But there was always in my life something that, that called for more. Well, my, uh, my daughter Erin, my oldest daughter, was born blind. We could tell after a few months that she wasn't tracking visually. So we brought her into the doctor, and the doctor said that she probably had a neurological problem. So she, they thought she had brain damage, basically. What went through your mind when that happened? I don't think anything prepares young parents for a child with a disability. And when they came to us and said, well, we have good news and bad news. And the good news is your daughter does not have brain damage like we thought. The bad news is she's blind. And I, and I went, yes, she's blind. I go, you know, so what? She could do anything. But when she got to be nine years old, they took her from this protected little cloistered uh, blind class and they um, integrated her with sighted children and the sighted kids, of course, being kids. Uh, teased her because her eyes would dart back and forth. She never learned, her eyes never learned to track. So she said, Dad, you know, they're teasing me. I, you know, I can read just like everyone else. And she could, she was considered partially blind. She could read a two inch letter about a half an inch from her face. And so she decided that she wasn't gonna be blind. So she threw down her cane and refused to learn braille and said, I'm not blind. And her teachers are saying, Jim, this kid's gotta learn braille to continue in school. So I was desperate to find her something that she could she could get involved in that would make her feel good about herself. The turning point for me was when I was with WGN Radio and one of the announcers turned me on to a blind ski group, the American Blind Skiing Foundation. Within a couple weeks, we had my daughter up on the hill learning how to ski. This is my daughter, Erin, going down the hill. Erin had been skiing for a few years, so she's, you can see she's pretty independent. And I'm skiing behind her, and that, of course, is when I had a different barber. So here we're coming down a, we're coming down a nice, wide open run, and I'm, I'm calling out turns to her left turn, right turn. Okay. 
within a couple weeks, she was going back to school, and they said, what did you do this weekend? And she'd say, well, I went skiing. And they go, right, you're blind. How do you ski? And she'd say, no, really, here's the pictures. And she then began to excel in grade school and middle school, high school, won awards, got grants, and, and I blamed it on the skiing. You know, it's that, it's that power and that independence and that confidence and self-esteem. And of course it improved her life and, and our family's life. But what really inspired me was I had friends that I worked with in the media business that said, Jim, you know, I was afraid to take on this challenge of my life until I saw your blind daughter scheme. And I thought, wow. And I realized it was a ripple effect that touched other people's lives. And that inspired me to start thinking about ways that we could do the same thing in diving that I've been doing in skiing. And I want to call it Dive Heart. I also thought the name spoke about what we wanted to do. It was diving, but it was also all about teaching with love and, and helping people really imagine the possibilities in their life. When I decided to leave the media business, it was a huge decision. I left a six-figure income to become a volunteer. And, and there was actually a couple days that it was difficult for me to get out of bed because I went, what did you do? <laughs> what are you, crazy? But having the, the parts of the puzzle come together kind of bring you to a point in life where you go, if I'm going to do this, I better do it now. And uh, you, you roll the dice and take a chance. You know, I could have probably stumbled through life happily in the media business if my daughter had not been blind. And I can't even imagine going back. I work seven days a week, and I don't draw a salary. And I, I work harder in some ways than I ever did, but I don't feel like I'm working at all, doing what I do to help individuals with disabilities. Cozumel, Dive Heart, 2011. Well, you ready for it today? Uh, getting ready, yeah. It's going to be another good day. Wow, today looks nice out there. Beautiful day in Cozumel. Okay, good going. Hopefully we see some sharks. Stand directly up under the sun and watch the shadow. What's going to happen day. today, man? Another day of fantastic diving. Yeah, I think you're doing some some deep ones today. Oh yeah, well that'll be good. I like I like deep diving. <laughs> well, we're in Cozumel, Mexico. We're at the uh, Cozumel Hotel. And uh, what are you doing down here? Well, I came out for a dive with Dive Heart. You know what you're doing today, Ian? We're going to water, have some fun, be safe, come back up, hopefully see some sea life. I'm Lieutenant Ian James Brown. I grew up in uh, New Jersey, joined the Air Force, spent a few years abroad. So I was injured in 2002 in a uh, motor vehicle accident that happened in the line of duty on base. And it left me uh, paralyzed initially at the T2 level and I was completely injured. And I loved to, to scuba dive prior to being injured. And now I finally, 10 years later, I had the first chance to jump back in the water. What we do several times a year is we take individuals with disabilities on trips outside of the country, and divers of all abilities are welcome. We call our, our trips life-changing scuba adventure trips because they absolutely are life-changing. We want that light to come back in their eyes if they're depressed or they're struggling with their disability. I'm kind of strange when it comes to diving because some people like to be independent and they like to go and see a beautiful reef or a wreck or something like that and, and they like it quiet and away from people. The payoff for me is the opportunity to help other people get that wow feeling. Next. You love diving? Oh yeah. It's all like a sense of accomplishment. But now it's more like I really need diving. And I'm grateful that that part's there for support. Greg has got an incredible spirit. He went from being very inaudible, very immobile, to last spring a year ago, he threw away his cane, and he's walking around without a cane. I'm sure he'll be running 5K races before you know it. I think Dive Heart has given Greg the ability to take on challenges he wouldn't have taken on before. The new me. I'm all about adapting and overcoming, and that's what I've done for these past five years. Is there any other place that I'd rather be than dive? Since I've been diving, I, I've gone from, from the wheelchair to a rolling walker, and now I, I occasionally use a cane, but you know, it's getting better, it's getting better. 
I'm ready to get rid of this. I want to get rid of this cane. And, and you know, eventually it's going to happen. There's no replacement for diving, especially when it comes to my physical health. And if I could do more, yeah, I would. Because I'm hooked on it. I mean, I, I, I got a passion for it now, you know. Don't have no passion for no women. I got a passion for diving. <laughs> We're all the same once we get into the water, you know. I don't care what the amount of physical strength that you really have. When you're in the water, we're all the same. We bring Daryl back on trips now so that he can show young young guys with disabilities that are coming into this that, hey, you know what? I was scared. I, I, I was immobile. I was in a wheelchair. And now look at me. It's inspiring for me to watch where Daryl was and where he's come. And it's great to have guys like Daryl and Greg, you know, on those kinds of trips because now they can inspire other people as well. All right, man. All right. We'll definitely see you later. I think Dive Hard has had a very positive effect on Zan's life. And for him to be able to say, hey, before I was even 12, I'd already scuba dived, something that some adults don't do their entire life. It helps, you know, build his confidence. His life is about a whole lot more than, than just the first appearance of having a, a physical disability. We would love to see Zan get to a point in his training where he can go on one of the trips and possibly speak to other children in his similar circumstance about Dive Heart and how great it's been for him. I think he'd be very motivating for other people. So it's really just the beginning of Dive Heart for Zan. Zan is an incredible kid. I got to believe he's got a bright future because he's coming into this at a time when scuba therapy is just being developed. And as he stays with Dive Heart and he gets in the water more and more, we're going to see results that are going to be off the charts. He's the future of Dive Heart, so I hope he runs Dive Heart someday and, and he's talking to you 10 years from now. Do you have any idea when you started it that it would become as widespread as it has? I didn't have a clue. <laughs> I didn't have a clue. We have hundreds and hundreds of local volunteers that are very active, and we have over 5,000 people on our email list, donors and volunteers all around the world. We've been to over 70 cities. We've helped spin off nine nonprofits like ourselves around the country, and we've started up programs in China, Australia, and uh, Israel. We've reached out and touched thousands and thousands of people. Uh, the goal, though, is millions. He did excellent. <laughs> when this started, I thought this was going to be something that helped individuals with their confidence, independence, and self-esteem, and I was happy with that. But what we've seen over the last 13 years since I started doing this is it's, it's not just a feel-good thing. We've seen people get better. We've seen people with traumatic brain injuries say, you know what, this has saved my life. We've seen people with physical disabilities say, I can't move anywhere in the world like I can underwater. People saying, you know, I don't have pain now. It's about actually starting to do research and rehabilitation in the zero gravity environment, which has never been done before. Imagine if we get people in the water every day or three times a week with trained staff working on range of motion and then seeing the results. I believe it's lightning in a bottle and it's gonna be incredible. When you discover something like that, you have an obligation to do something about it. You can't sit on the couch. You know, you have to change the world, and that's what we're doing with Dive Heart. So the future's bright for Dive Heart, too, I believe.